And Tom, you are going to go first. Tell me about this deal. It's a one-year deal for Cam Newton going back to the Patriots. The maximum value of the contract is close to $14 million, but my understanding is the actual base value of this deal is less than half of that. Basically, it's the deal that Cam Newton signed a year ago, very heavy on incentives, with a little bit extra in terms of base pay and a chance to earn a little bit more as well. In other words, for the Patriots, this is a significant move after they had explored other potential quarterback solutions. They had explored a variety of different trade potentials, but they bring Cam Newton back. This is one move, but it may not be the last move in this offseason. This is not such a big financial commitment to Cam that they can't afford to go out in free agency or trade and get somebody, and certainly does not disrupt anything that they might be thinking about doing in terms of the draft either. And if anybody was going to do this, if anybody was going to make a, a financial commitment, albeit a, a small one in comparison to the max value of the deal, and then do something later on and say, well, we'll just eat that investment that we made as a, uh, a security deposit, basically, uh, it would be the Patriots. Uh, and, and that's not to say that they're looking at Cam Newton like he can't do things or whatever. It's just their options are open and they're saying, well, let's take the burden of hand while we wait for the two in the bush, right? I mean, that's pretty much what they're doing right now. So we'll see where it goes from here. Uh, but they obviously think that with the COVID situation last year affecting everything, the off season and just everything uh, and how it happened for Cam Newton, the new guy inside the building, uh, that this year will be better in large part because they think they're going to be able to put some pieces around them like Tom talked about. Yeah, and Mike, I think they felt like last year was the floor for Cam Newton. And it's not going to get any lower than that when you consider him signing late in June. And of course, Things being done virtually, not being involved with that playbook, having to learn the personnel on the fly and taking over the starting role maybe three weeks into training camp. So really pretty much close to the start of the season, he gets the ball. And in talking to people in that building, including about a dozen of his teammates over the last month or so, the picture I got was, look, he did so much with that offense when you consider how little he knew about it to start and that maybe some of the things that he struggled with, maybe processing a little bit quicker, those things will change now that he has a full off season with the playbook and with the personnel to understand how they do things, and that will improve that offense. And I think the other thing they look at, and I'm, I've been chirping about this quite a bit, they realize the need to remake their wide receiver and tight end rooms, and that is a huge goal for them this off season. When you look at it and say chicken or the egg, was the passing offense bad because of Cam or because of the talent around him? I think they looked at it and said, well, Cam wasn't great, but he's going to be better. Meanwhile, we got to do something about the other stuff because we can't have Jacoby Myers, an undrafted free agent, as our leading receiver next year. That just can't happen. And as Fish pointed out yesterday, and as we have said many times before, pre-COVID, Cam was a different guy. After COVID, that offense hit a wall, and he took uh, needed a little time to get back. Curious as to what the free agent market would have been, however, if he had hit free agency next Wednesday. We won't know. Tom Pelissero, Mike Garofolo, Mike Giardi.